Today we're rambling on in Buckingham. It's the market town, as you might have guessed, between lots of Roman pottery and they've found evidence of a temple and other Roman buildings. They had a significant fire in 1725, which seems to have happened to a lot of towns round about here, and 138 dwellings were destroyed. Well, there's some lovely old buildings down this bit of the square. This is the historic marketplace with lots of busy roads. And ahead of us is the county jail. It's now a museum. It was built in 1748 and funded by the Baronet of Stowe, which will be the subject of another ramble on. The old jail is now the tourist office. It's had, um, it was the police station. It's been a fire station and a cafe and now it's been restored with lottery funding and it's the tourist information in 18, wait a minute, 1839 I think George Gilbert Scott who's the architect from Gorecott who we talked about in the toaster ramble on he um, designed the workhouses in Toaster and the Albert Memorial. He um, restored the building and put some of his own little bits and bobs on. And now we're just walking up here, the rest of the market square. This side of the market square has seen a bit of 60s and 70s development but there's still some nice old buildings that we can spot I'm quite sure about this in the middle of the square mm. and over there yeah in some nice brick buildings there's a massive queue there outside the barbers because they've reopened today and here's the chantry chapel Chantry Chapel, that's hard to say. Um, it's National Trust, it's 15th century, restored again by George Gilbert Scott in Victorian times, and now it operates as a second hand bookshop. Isn't it nice? Look at that old door. There's a view, a better view of the Chantry House and then we're going round here now trying not to get run over. Some big hotels in the square, the White Hart. Then we've got round the corner is the Old Town Hall. It's so busy, these streets around here, they're all tiny little streets and big cars trying to negotiate them. Uh, you have the White Hart there, coaching in from the 18th, 19th century. And then here, we've got the Old Town Hall, which is Grade 2 listed was built in 1783 after the fire and we'll have a look at the symbol on the top so on top of the old town hall is the swan which is the symbol of Buckingham lots of old houses up there and we're going yeah we're going up Castle Street now the Villiers Hotel 
George Villiers was the first Duke of Buckingham, one of King Charles II's loyal friends and a soldier. Originally built in the 1500s and the Duke of Buckingham used it as a coaching inn and it's Grade 2 listed. Lots of old properties down there. And up here is the church of St Peter and St Paul. is in the style known as Gothic Revival and guess who did all the refurbing? Giles Gilbert Scott. He's a bit like uh, every garden round here from a big house has been done by Capability Brown and he's the same, he must have been in a hundred places at once. chimneys there. It's a huge church as is befitting for a county town I suppose and a little bit about Buckingham. It's much quieter now than it was because at one stage um, the Buckingham arm of the Grand Junction Canal came through here at the other end of the town and that was from 1801 to the end of the 19th century really. It was abandoned in 1964 and plans are afoot, well they've been going for a long time, to restore it. It ran from Cosgrove to the wharf in Buckinghamshire, in Buckingham and you can see there are some signs as you come into the town that mentioned wharf in the name. Then there was the uh, the railway which was here from 1850 to 1964. So we're going to walk along part of the old railway in a moment. And there was also um, a cinema called the Chandos Cinema from 1934 to 1987. Unfortunately there's no nothing left of that now. I think they build they built houses on that site. You can see that we're up quite high here, looking over the houses from the church. And that's because it's actually built on Castle Hill. Castles were always very high up so they could keep an eye on the enemy approaching. There's lots of old houses just down here. I suspect that this end of town mustn't have been affected by the fire. This is Church Street. Some lovely little old houses. It could easily be used for a television production of some sort of period drama. Nice and quiet down here. How lovely. And if we turn round there, we can see the church. And at the bottom of the hill is this building here that was long. Here now, this is oh, here's a Victorian post box. VR, there's not many of those left now. And we're going down here, which is Well Street, and this is somewhere called the Oddfellows Hall. 
1891, it tells us. I think they used to be sort of meeting rooms, really. I don't think there was anything odd about the people that went there. Don't think it's used now. Just past somewhere up there that said Lace Maker's Cottage. Because there was a lot of home industry around here. Ladies making lace. Buckinghamshire, Northamptonshire. So we'll go back up to Church Street. These are now almshouses. The plaque over here tells us that it was founded by John Barton in 1431 and rebuilt in 1910. And down here we have a house that's called Twisted Chimneys. Um, these are very old, aren't they? Look at these. And that beautiful magnolia tree. Is that there? Might be the manor house. That's, there's the twisted chimneys. And this house is Elizabethan. Twisted chimneys house. It's like another world down here. We're going in here now, which is the old cemetery. Before we do, we'll just have a look here, the banner house. Look at that little angel. Uh, and again, this is Elizabethan. So now, we're going into the old graveyard that tells us site of the original 13th century parish church demolished in 1776 there's some very old graves in here a lot of the headstones have been put against the wall there. It's lovely, so peaceful. Another Victorian post box. It's sealed up, so obviously not in use. It's painted black. I don't know what that signified, unless it was something to do with Prince Albert dying. Um, this building here, which I need to cross over to show you, is the Masonic Hall, because it's got the compass sign up there, 1787. And there's a very grand building here as well, Yeomanry House. A lot of the buildings around here have been taken over by Buckingham University which is good really because it keeps them well maintained and in service and lots of new buildings are from the university right we're going up here now so that's manor street looking back at that twisted chimney's house and i wonder if that's the manor house Charles I used the manor house as his um, sort of war office, really, in the uh, Civil War. Because it was a real royalist stronghold around these parts. Oh, Buckingham itself as well, particularly. The old Honey House.
We're now on the old railway bed of the uh, the line that went through Buckingham, closed in 1964. From where we were before, it's just a short walk up Tingewick Road. And then when you see the industrial estate on your right, there's a sign on the opposite side of the road that says Riverside Walk. It's quite a nice walk because it brings you along here and then you can join up with the river and come back into Buckingham that way. So we're at the end of the bit we're going down of the old railway line. Now I don't know, I'm not sure, but I wonder whether this cobbled bit used to be the platform. Hmm, who knows? So that way, if you carry on, I think goes to Aylesbury along there. I've never been that far because we're turning back now to go into Buckingham. But it looks like it's a nice walk. See what it says on the... I'm not sure what this building is at all. I've tried to find out but I was mixing it up or wondering whether it was something to do with the railway because this is where the station was but it says AD 1994 and it's now part of the university so probably not Isn't this nice? A little... that's a weir isn't it? Not a waterfall um, if we spin round over there, we should be able to see the railway bridge. I hope you enjoyed our ramble on around Buckingham. It was a lovely day for it. There may be a few inaccuracies. I've not been living around here for very long. Uh, they're just little things that interest me and bits that I've got off the internet. So do make a comment if you've um, if you've got something to add to it or something you disagree with. And I hope that I see you in my next ramble on.